The following video has been created without the use of AI. Please support your human content creators by liking and subscribing and commenting something down below. Thank you. It was late. Super late. And Husk had run out of a key ingredient for your favorite cocktail. A brandy Alexander. What was missing was creme de cacao. Sadly, it was part of your behavior correction training that led you to going to buy more of the liquor yourself, rather than angrily demand he'd do it himself. Of course, even if you did, he would obviously refuse, even if you were sitting at the longer lever, metaphorically speaking. And so, a lady of your standards was forced to leave the comfortable safety of the Hasbin Hotel, dressed modestly in an expensive designer hoodie, skirt that just barely stopped above your knees, stockings and shoes. It was far from what you usually wore, of course, as normally you preferred your extravagant cloaks with hoods, cylinders and boots. But Charlie said, No more fantasy get-ups, no more attention-seeking, this will only lead to you abusing your powers again. Ugh, why were you doing this? Hands in your pockets, you browse the selection of a nearby 24-7 liquor store, while the shopkeeper eyed you. Vampire demon, super white skin, red glowing eyes, fangs, Meanwhile, your thin fingers tapped against the liquor selection until you found the right one. Wasn't your preferred brand, but the right type. You took the bottle and went to the cashier. He eyed you skeptically. A little expensive, huh? You tilted your head back a little, visually sneering at him. It wasn't expensive at all. Doesn't matter. I get it for free anyways. Immediately his right eye twitched and angrily he shouted, I don't do taps, missy. Oh, I'm not asking for a tap. I'm asking politely for you to give me the bottle for free for insulting me. By now it would have been faster to just pay, but you couldn't help yourself. Angrily the demon tried punching you, yet you caught his fist mid-air. It felt as if he hit a wall. Stay quiet, you ordered, letting go. And confused, the vampire just stood there, his lips twitching. He wanted to throw insults at you, but he was physically unable to open his mouth. Meanwhile, you pulled back your hood, taking off a necklace. It was a silvery metal shard almost like a tip of an arrow. You place it on the counter. You're going to game it yourself with this. Now, without hesitation, the vampire grabbed the piece of iron, but just as the cool metal pressed against his throat, causing a sizzling noise to occur, you shouted, Stop! He stopped moving entirely, a thin line of blood coming from his wound. I'm asking you again. The drink is for free. Right? I, I, I. See, what you almost cut your own throat with is angel metal. I'm pretty sure you know what that implication means. The demon's eyes lost all of their light, replaced by utter horror. Do you really want to experience your second permanent death over a single bottle. That isn't even the most expensive item in your shitty little store. And my patience is running thin. Take it! Take it! It's a present from me to you! Just please never come back! You smirked. Oh, but I will. You're just a few minutes away on foot from where I live. I think I'm becoming a regular here. You smirked. 
Yeah, my new favorite liquor store. <laughs> now, give me my good luck charm back. Please. The demon handed the necklace back to you. Quietly, you put it back on. Creating heaven and hell was what most Cinnaborn demons like you strived for. A life without worry, a life without rules, a life filled with drugs, sex, and killing. That's what demons wanted. And for some, this was easier to achieve than others. It was unknown even to the powers that be what decided the demon race one became. Though there were some strong, educated guesses. For one, spider demons were sex pests in life. Monstrosities of sin broke every of the Ten Commandments while also living every sin to its fullest in life. And dying of old age. Without ever being punished. And false imps were obedient little shits who had been obedient to a fault to their masters in life. And those were just some of them. And you? You were a member of an ultra-rare demon species that in all of history only five people ever had become, scattered across all seven layers of hell. Corpse gods. So rare no one knew why anyone became them. But one thing was clear. They posed a threat so strong they instantly became overlords by mere existence alone. They didn't need acts of incredible violence or cunning. They just needed a single command. Corpse gods had an unbelievably useful ability, often just called Command Undead. It allowed you and other corpse gods to control any undead demon with any command. They could not resist. Among the large cluster of what counted as an undead demon were vampires, ghouls, zombies, mummies, banshees, just to name a few. They all had to bend to your will. There was no yes or no or buts, just pure, unadulterated obedience. As for an undead demon, it was impossible to say no to a corpse god. In fact, your kind was so powerful that the powers that be who truly were in charge of the circles were forced to treat your kind as equals. And they hated it. They hated it down to their very core. Especially on the sloth layer, as about 60% of its population was classified as undead. At least so you heard from Hellborn, who had visited or came from Sloth. Oh well. The limitations of being stuck on a particular layer was really the biggest mountain to overcome for your kind. And what was a demon as unbelievably powerful as you doing in the Hasbin Hotel? Courtesy. It was courtesy. Play nice with the princess of hell, so that her father was more positive towards you. Arguably, Lucifer was the only being in all of hell with the power to kill you by virtue of being an angel, and that meant that rather than being his equal, you were below him, and you hated that. You desperately were trying to get on his good side at any moment. The way you saw it, if Charlie liked you, he liked you back. And if you redeemed yourself, well, then nothing mattered anymore anyways. So who cares? Throwing your hood back over your head, and with your bottle in hand, you left the liquor store making your way back to the hotel. Of course, the surprise on Husk's face when you slammed that bottle on the bar was priceless. He stared at it for a moment. You had even written your name on it with a marker. Really got on broad one, huh? I wouldn't say broad. His eyes met yours. You stole it? 
You shook your head. I got it for free. Husk's eyes narrowed. There's no way in hell, pun intended, that you got anything down here for free, unless something fishy was happening. The Husk knew not to annoy you too much. You had a surprisingly short fuse for someone of your caliber. Sighing, he started mixing your drink without a fuzz. Taking out a shilled cocktail glass from the freezer and then filling the shaker of ice. Skillfully, he poured various liquids into his cocktail measuring cups, adding one half fluid ounce cream de coca, one half fluid ounce brandy, and one half fluid ounce heavy cream. <laughs> you know, beast. Husker mumbled just loud enough for you to hear as he started shaking his tin. Stars of your favorite ring are actually surrounded by a lot of intrigue. So no one really sure knows who made it first. Some say it was created for the Russian Tsar Alexander II. And others say the cocktail was created for the British royal family as a wedding drink in the 1920s. No, don't ask me exactly the date, or I throw the shaker in your face. This wasn't one for much talk, but this was just meant to skip the time it took for the outside of the shaker to gain a thin layer of frost, an indicator that it was shaking enough. He filled the glass. Only for a moment did his eyes meet yours, and that was already enough for him to sigh. Yeah, yeah, he complained as he took out a grater and nutmeg. Gently covered the drink in a thin layer of brown powder. Husk then placed his claws on the inner side of the glass and gently pushed it towards you. Well then, bottoms up, beast. He grumbled. To enjoy a small cocktail like this to its fullest, you refrained from actually downing it like it was nothing. The tiniest of sips moved past your lips, the flavor of the creamy, sweet cocktail enveloping your taste buds. But as you exhaled, pleased, about to praise the cat, you were surprised. His visage had changed to utter surprise. Following his gaze, you met with none other than Charlie's father, the King of Hell, Lucifer Morningstar. He had just entered into the lobby and was approaching the bar. Ah, oh, shit. The fuck did I do to deserve? Ah, oh, shit. What the fuck have I done in these past 24 hours to... He went quiet for a moment. Fine, I deserve it, but... Why... Cat, just the sinner I was looking for. Lucifer sat down on one of the bar stools. What in the hells are you doing here, sir? Lucifer sighed dramatically. <sighs> uh, I'm hiding from my butler, he complained. Priminger is still trying to get me to leave the castle. Uh, terrorizing a bunch of people, make me afraid of the crown again, yada yada. Uh, can you, like, just... Make something to waste time and to cool off. Husk's right eye twitched. But then the cat snorted. <laughs> Long drink it is then, boss. Smirking. Meanwhile, you lean to the side, placing a hand under your chin, looking at Lucifer. Oh, beast of bones! He said finally, after recognizing you. Uh, isn't it enough that you have a monthly meeting with me? Do you have to bother me in my off time? His gaze then went up and down your body and he chuckled. <laughs> what are you wearing? You look, uh... Way younger in that getup. You blushed and exhaled. As part of you trying to keep a friendly relationship with the King of Hell, you invited yourself into his castle on a monthly basis. 
Twenty years ago, his wife Lilith was seething with jealousy that you and him would vanish in the castle's dining hall for a friendly meal. Up until she vanished seven years ago. According to him, it was a divorce. Since then, his demeanor had become much less kingly and more childish. Though, not that you minded. Childish men were easier to control. What does way too young mean, my dearest Lucifer? You purred, and he gulped audibly. Well, usually you wear that gaudy getup of yours. Makes you look like a zombie. You inhaled sharply. Gaudy! Your regular cloaks were inspired by voodoo and witch doctors, with a lot of bone accessories, a red shirt, and just the cutest high-heeled black boots you could find, all coming together with a bone-decorated top hat. It made you feel sexy, powerful. It just worked really well together with your snow-white skin and raven black hair. Made it require very little makeup to give you a necromancer-type skeleton look. Now hearing it described as gaudy, you were offended. But you contained your anger. It didn't manifest visibly at least. But Lucifer sighed. Uh, of course, I never say that during a meeting. This is uh, all of the books. He was being smug for the sake of being smug. Any other secrets and opinions you didn't tell me, my king? He thought for a moment. Well, perhaps, but I'll keep those to myself, beast of bones. You scoffed. It was in this moment Husk placed the tall glass before Lucifer. Batanga. Uh, excuse me? Batanga. Tequila, lime, coke, salted rim. Lucifer tilted his head as he inspected the delicate salt sticking to the chilled glass. Invented in the 60s in Mexico. Cools down a soul in seconds. Salt? Never tequila, your highness. <laughs> it lessens the burn. You finished Husk's sentence with a smirk. Though in this case... Well, Beast of Bones is correct, though in this case it's to tame the sweetness of the coke. The King of Hell looked at you, and then at the cat. He felt in danger, but wasn't sure why exactly. Carefully, Lucifer sniffed the drink, while you and Husk exchanged amused grimaces. And then he finally drank. It burned. It really did. He was used to mild wines. Not this. It was like a punch to the face, and yet the tender hardiness and caramel flavor mixed together so wonderfully. It's absolutely disgusting, he said after half the glass was empty. <sighs> Make me another. Now. You sure can drink a lot? I might not be used to the taste, but for me to get drunk, you'd have to spike it with something really good. Chuckled Lucifer in response to you. You had spent all night drinking with the two men. And surprisingly, it was Husk who checked out first. He was snoring on a sleeping bag behind the counter while you and Lucifer were chatting. Well, not really chatting. All this alcohol had made you a little woozy and horny. And you were pulling out your A-game. Then again, you were quite rusty. As normally when you saw someone you liked, you just commanded them to bend you over. You had been sliding so close to him by now, you were practically spread out on the bar. Of course, you knew that a man shot like him prideful and immature, would just melt into the puddle by simply praising him. That's exactly what he was doing right now. 
your face. Since we're so close, he was almost touching your nose. You smirked, eyes half lidded, seductively even. Lucifer smirked. Lucifer smiled, and then you mused. Must be such a bore, though, being so resistant to earthly pleasures. Hmm. Well, it's not all pleasures that are locked from me. Oh, you exhaled, pleased. Whatever could you mean? You purred. He gently and politely took your free hand and kissed the back of it.、Mm, you know what I mean, darling. You bit your lower lip, your heart beating faster. Ah,、uh, Mister Morningstar, are you trying to seduce me? You purred with fake innocence. I could ask you the same, beast of bones. Quietly, you looked at each other, and then your lips crashed. His lips, warm and soft, his tongue, his tongue penetrating your defenses, making you groan into him. Arms wrapped around each other, filled with undying lust, tight and filled with desire. Take that, Lilith," he thought. But with your focus not being on him for just a split second, you instantly felt the sting of electricity. It wasn't strong enough to be painful but noticeable. It had a weird taste to it. It tasted like divine energy. Smelled weirdly enough. The last time you experienced that was during the last extermination. Your one eye. He hasn't noticed yet.、Uh, interesting. Immediately, you had a theory. His divinity was spilling over into you as he was making out with you, and since you were a demon, that meant immeasurable pain. But your demonic powers were beyond the little spill he was giving you, and you could easily dampen it and accept it. Something he too soon realized. As he increased the strength of his grip and tightened, you gasped for air, reveling in the pleasure he was giving you. Until he pulled back, disappointed, you tried following with your head, but he placed a finger on your lips. Uh, 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 beast.、Uh, tell me, do you really want to risk it? You tightly grabbed his tie, your foreheads. Bumping against each other painfully, eyes glowing in a dangerous sea foam green, you snarled like a tigress during mating season. If you don't come to my room right now and submit to me, I will cause a rebellion in this dump. All I need is one command: you limp-dicked, rubber ducky-obsessed, high society, wine-sipping, effeminate twink. Excuse of a king. He blinked. The last to be was this aroused. Was when Lilith pulled on her pegging strap on for the first time.、Uh, Lead the way, my lady. He stuttered weakly. It was two days later. Lucifer was shaking as he sat in the hotel's cafeteria, sipping coffee. When Charlie came in for breakfast, D- Daddy! She shouted in surprise. She quickly ran over, but stopped midway. I-, I haven't heard from you in two days, and oh my God, what happened to you? He raised his coffee cup with a helpless expression. You look like a corpse, like someone drained you of all your fluids. He bit his lower lip. I, I mean, you. You're not wrong," he said weakly. It was then that you entered with a very pleased expression, walking past Charlie. Oh, hey, beast of bones! Where have you been? You haven't shown up for therapy, and finally, Charlie made the connection. Her face dropped. To 
days. You sat down next to Lucifer, and while you just looked at her with cold professionalism, she could see that you were very unsubtly reaching for Lucifer's crotch. Charlie bent over towards a decorative plant, vomiting into it. Hey, thank you for making it to the very end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and please remember to like and subscribe. But before I say goodbye, I would like to shout out all of my lovely channel members, especially my darling stewards. Husky HD 17, Bella Mare, Mystic Jade 111, Giovanni Moretti, Twilight Mia, Angry Boxman, Hella, Melofia, Anonymous Weep, and Nicodemus D. I couldn't do this without your help. Thank you for your continued support. Anyways, I hope you have a nice day. Goodbye.